When I first started my YouTube channel, Yosenju was a deck that I showcased really often because I loved playing the deck. However, I noticed that I haven't updated it in quite some time for you guys. Now, this deck has evolved through the years, having different variations, the going first build, the going second build, the kaiju build, etc, etc. But in today's video, I want to show you guys an anti-meta build for Yosenju to be able to compete and keep up with today's format. So with that being said, I don't want to keep you guys waiting for too long. I really want to show you guys the spice and what I've cooked up. So with that, Let's get right into the deck profile. So just before we get into the profile here, I do want to say Yosenju historically has been a deck that can go first, that can go second. You can play the Kaiju builds, you can play the Floodgate builds. In this build, it is a go second build today, but it's very anti-meta and you guys are going to see some of the choices that make this deck anti-meta. Essentially, it's to beat most of the decks right now that you'll find in a day-to-day -day locals or whatever because of the meta right now, right? So we're playing 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, and 2 Sujik. I swear by these ratios, I would never change these ratios up. I think Isna is a good card, don't get me wrong, but we're not playing cards like Isna because it doesn't get you to where you want to go. What this deck wants to do is you want to be able to break boards and you want to be able to OTK. Yes, Isna and some of the other names can do some cool things for you. However, you're not really here to do some niche things. You're here to do one thing and one thing only and use these effects as well as the other cards that you guys are going to see here to break your opponent's board, stop your opponent from making boards, and then being able to OTK them, right? So these are the Yosenjus that we're playing. If anyone doesn't know what these do, comma one bounces a card comma two can attack directly but it's half damage that's not as important you just really need it for the other name comma three gets to search a yosenju and sujik is pretty much like an honest but on the board you can target another yosenju and it gains a thousand attack so it's really powerful it helps you otk and that's really important right that's why we're playing the two sujik comma one comma two and comma three all have the same effect as well when they're normal summon you can normal summon another yosenju right except itself and then a card that i really like playing with yosenjus and i guess some of the hand traps i'm gonna be showing you guys here as well is three shifter so the thing is with these cards is they all come back to your hand on the end phase i don't know if i mentioned that earlier but they're kind of like spirit monsters they come back to your hand on the end phase and you're never really worried about them going to the graveyard so for that reason shifter is really powerful when you're going second of course shifter into so many decks is just absolutely broken three ash blossom of course being the most generic hand trap as well as three imperm so we are playing nine hand traps in this build and i think this is the perfect ratios this is all you're going to want to play because you're going to see the rest of the deck is essentially board breakers and cards to help you essentially otk right the cool thing about imperm is it's a hand trap but it's also a board breaker for you which is really nice so that's why of course i like playing imperm and then these just synergize really well with the yosenjus there's a lot of other cards that synergize with the yosenjus something like nibiru but we'll talk about nibiru in a little bit here but i think these are just the best cards you should be playing in your main deck moving on i talked about some of the board breakers and this whole deck kind of being cards that break boards and help you otk and fenrir is one of the best cards if not the best card in the game right now to do that right being able to special fenrir start your turn by just summoning this and then you're able to use this as a board breaker being able to search another card to your hand of course is really powerful as well so three fenrir is really good it also baits out a lot of hand traps we're also playing three alpha and one pancreatops. So again, board breakers that can help you OTK because you can summon all of these monsters to your side of the field and they all synergize with each other. So the reason they synergize with each other is Fenrir, you have to control no monsters, right? So you summon your Fenrir. Pancratop says you can summon it if your opponent controls more monsters than you. Now, if you're going second, your opponent controls more monsters than you. Let's say they have two, you can special Fenrir and then summon Pancratops. Now, Alpha also has an effect that says if your opponent controls monsters with attack greater to the monsters that you control. So essentially, let's say we summon Pancratops on our turn and this is 2600 attack. Our opponent has two monsters that equal like let's say 3000 attack right then you can still summon the alpha so the really cool thing is they all synergize with each other because you can always summon at least two of them sometimes three of them on the board at the same time which is absolutely insane and that's why i like playing these guys over here they're so so powerful and then lastly we are playing three gamma seal in the main deck now gamma seal of course synergizes with your senju a lot because with comma one you can gamma seal your opponent then use comma one effect to bounce the gamma seal back to your hand you can actually use the gamma seal again if you guys want to if not you just pretty much broke your opponent's board got a gamma seal again for next turn if you're not otking right so that's the synergy there with the comma one and that's why it's really powerful right so these are the board breaking monsters and these are the monsters that are also going to help you push for a lot of damage in otk because again pancratops 26 he's 3000 he's 24 it's going to help push for a lot of damage and essentially cover the weakness of the deck which is not being able to finish off your opponent and of course with a deck like this one you guys want to be playing a lot of consistency cards so one of the main consistency cards we're playing is tanky tanky searches any of your yosenju monsters which is really powerful and it gives them 100 attack boost which is really nice so i like playing three tanky it's essentially just a rota for the deck two pot of desires as well you guys saw we're playing three of pretty much every important card in the deck so pot of desires is really important and powerful in this deck you don't mind if you banish extra copies of your cards also you just want as many cards in your hand as possible because if you have multiple you send your names and you get multiple bodies on the board and you can go from there right so two pot of desires then we are playing three triple tactics 
picks talent. Talent is really powerful, of course, in today's format. Being able to steal your opponent's monster, being able to draw cards for you, which is really powerful. Sometimes you just need to draw power, which is really nice. And this card is pretty much live into every matchup right now. So three talents. And then we're playing the one Harpy's Feather Duster, one Call by the Grave. And lastly, for the 41st card of the deck, we're playing one Double or Nothing. Double or Nothing is really powerful because, again, it's another win condition for you. You're able to OTK your opponent through Double or Nothing. And all of the Yosenju monsters are level four, which means that as soon as you get two of them on the board, you can make Utopia. And this is going to help you OTK and push for damage, right? So that's it for the cards here. They're all power spells and they're all really, really important to either get you to where you want to go or be able to OTK your opponent. Moving on to the extra deck here, we are playing a couple Link Monsters. So we're playing Underworld Goddess as well as Appaloosa. Now, I actually wanted to play SP Little Knight. I don't have access to SP Little Knight. I don't have that card. But if you guys do play SP Little Knight here over the Apple or over a lot of these cards here, because you guys are going to see the extra deck, mostly is going to be just toolbox cards, cards that you can go into because typically you don't actually need access to your extra deck to win games with this deck. So for that reason, this deck I'm going to be showing you guys in the extra deck is going to be very flexible, whatever you guys want to play. There's just a few cards in here that I 100% recommend. Other than that, you guys can kind of spice it up depending on what you got right so underworld goddess 100 recommend though because if you're able to swarm the board with your essential monsters essentially being able to out any boss monster that you know can't be targeted can't be destroyed etc etc you can make underworld goddess which is really nice right so i really like playing this card apple is just a generic card here that if you steal your opponent's monsters you can kind of make apple with them you can make sp as well so apple is really powerful exiton knight redoer emerald Tornado Dragon, Dugaris. Like you guys can see, a lot of these cards are just toolbox. Dugaris helps you OTK sometimes as well. This is for back row matchups. Like, again, it's really up to what you guys want to play. I would 100% play Dweller though, because Dweller is, of course, really powerful into tier limit, which is actually really relevant right now. One Baguska, one Cowboy. I 100% recommend playing Cowboy as well. Another problem with this deck, like I mentioned earlier, is being able to finish off your opponent. Now, while we are playing some pretty big monsters to do that, sometimes you're just a little bit off. And with two Yosenju names on the board, you can make Cowboy and kind of just go from there. Of course, we're playing Utopia utopia double these are cards you have to be playing if you're playing the double or nothing right so you're playing these two and then i like to play a small zeus package so borbo draconine and zeus it kind of helps you get into zeus a little bit easier than some of these other ones and that's just kind of a different option for you guys but again you guys can see outside of maybe like these three underworld goddess maybe if you guys want to include the zeus package a lot of these here are just toolbox cards and they're also format dependent in a format where dweller sucks you guys can take out dweller again you guys can play cards like sp little knight you guys can play some more generic link two monsters so that you can link off your opponent's monsters once you take them with triple tactics talent etc etc right so i just want to show you guys it's a toolbox now lastly i want to show you guys a side deck but keep in mind the side deck is always going to be up to personal preference and you guys are going to be building it depending on what your locals is like right so if you're taking this deck to locals and you know your locals is all combo players make sure to side for combo decks if you know your locals is all back row players make sure to side for back row decks okay i just want to give you guys a generic side deck here that you guys can use as a skeleton right so three nibiru nibiru synergizes very well with this deck of course because your, your sendra monsters like i said earlier always going to be coming back to your hand so you're never really worried about the Sendra's going to the graveyard with Nibiru also this card is really powerful because it does help you push for more damage 3k beater of course is really nice we're playing three droll droll is really nice because here with droll it's it's one of those things that in certain matchups this is absolutely busted so that's why if like you know shifter is not good into a certain matchup or whatever you guys can play droll instead right we're playing one book of eclipse only because this was the 15th card so uh, that's the only reason i'm playing the one it also gets rid of purely which is really nice but we're playing the one book of eclipse as the 15th card two lightning storm for back row matchup then when you are forced to go first because sometimes your opponent is going to see that you want to go second you want to otk they're going to force you to go first and if they do that you have cards like d barrier which is good into a lot of matchups and solemn judgment which is also just generically really powerful again this is just a skeleton you guys don't have to use this exact side deck it's just something i kind of put together if your locals has a lot of purely players make sure you're playing more books maybe herald of the abyss cards that break purely boards if your locals is a lot of labyrinth of course you're going to want to play cosmic cyclone some more back row hate somewhere here so again just a skeleton for you guys to use and you guys can mix and match depending on what your local scene is like so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy that is my take on yosenju for today's format this is a deck that of course wants to be anti-meta you want to do things that the meta decks will not expect and are not prepared for stuff like the kaijus stuff like your alphas stuff like the board breakers etc etc shifter as well is a very anti-meta card and it makes this deck super super powerful now i hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you guys did make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we are uploading every single day through the month of December. So make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned into all of that. Deck profiles, combo videos, dual replays, everything right here on the channel. So thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.